So if you thought, wow, I have too much juice in my collection, just way too much, and I just want to burn through it as quick as possible, or just want to just get rid of all that liquid I've got in my cupboard, <laughs> this is a tank for you. That's going to do the job. Oh, yeah, it's time to crack a beer and uh, have a look at some new vape stuff. Cheers. Oh, so I'm very excited about these. Thank you for sending these, Freemax. There's a new Dual 18650 mod and some extra coils. Thank you, Freemax, for sending extra coils with the mods. Because if you're reviewing something and you've only got the two coils or sometimes one coil that's in the pack, it's not enough to kind of tell whether the coils are any good or not. Pretty cool that there's Dual 18650 mods kind of making a little bit of a comeback, maybe, or they're, they're, at least they're still popular. Because it's just been all pods. Everything's just, just pod this, pod that. <laughs> you know, small little devices. I have got a soft spot for the old Dual 18 650. Big mod, plenty of power, plenty of vapor, you know, blow stupid amounts of, of cloud. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's good fun. I haven't seen this mod at all before, so I've got no idea what it even looks like. We better just have a look at the specs real quick. It's all pretty normal stuff, apart from what I think is interesting. It's a 168 watt kit. Everything's normally 200 watts, 220 watt. That kind of range when you get the dual 18650s. So I thought it was kind of peculiar that it's like this really specific number. And I thought, well, maybe what they've done is limit the maximum wattage of the mod based on a realistic current draw number for cells that most people are likely to be using. For 220 watts, 110 watts per cell, that's when they're empty, that's going to be more current draw than any 18650 you can buy, like way more. So the highest current you can get in a in an 18650 is 30 amp. That's the maximum continuous discharge rating you can get. Above that doesn't exist. This does not exist. So if you see 40 amp, 45 amp written on a cell, it's not true. Completely does not exist. So if you make a device that can draw well over 30 amps from each cell, I mean, that's kind of irresponsible, isn't it? You can't safely get that wattage. You can't safely use that 220 watts. Not that anyone's really vaping at 220 watts, but... The fact that the device can do it, but there's no cells that exist to safely do it, is irresponsible, I reckon. So I was thinking, what is a really common current limit or current rating of um, most cells we use? Well, the first number that occurred to me was 20 amps. A lot of people are going to buy 20 amp cells to use with these kind of devices. Something like a Samsung 25R or, you know, Molycell, Molycell P26A is actually 25, but kind of around that 20 amp range, even 30 Qs, Samsung 30 Qs, Sony VTC 6, they're sort of 15 amp, but kind of you can kind of get away with 20 amp. Let's just say 20 amp is a good number for a, you know, a good power cell that you're likely to buy at 650. So what I did is I divided 168 by 20, and that came out to exactly 8.4. Now, I don't think that's coincidence because 8.4 is the series voltage of two cells that are fully charged. So possibly Freemax has looked at, you know, the full charge of two cells, 8.4, and said, okay, 20 amp cell is pretty a pretty normal kind of current rating to get. Multiplied it and gone 168. Cool, let's do that. And actually, if they've done that, I think that's really cool because they've actually had a think about it. So we're actually going to put a reasonable cap on it. So you can't do that. And that's great because they're putting a lower number here than what competitors do on their dual lane 650 mods. So they're not playing the numbers game here. They're not like, hey, look at us. We're 223 watts. We're just a little bit more. We're a little bit better. They're actually limiting that to a real world number and within a safe number for a safe current draw for the cells you're likely to use. It's actually better and more conservative to be using the lowest voltage your cells are at during discharge. The current actually goes up as the cell voltage drops to maintain the same wattage. Say at three volts, your cells are going to have to put out much more current than they would at 4.2 volts. So the math is a little bit wonky, but it does kind of seem like, a, I mean, it's, I think it's too much of a coincidence that 168 divided by 20 is exactly 8.4, which is exactly two cells at fully charged. So I think they have had actually had to think about that, even though it doesn't quite check out. But then again, if you used three volts per cell, six volts in series times that by 20, you haven't got much wattage to put on the device, so that's probably a bit low for, for, you know, for sales and marketing. Anyway, all the other specs are pretty normal, you know, output voltage up to 8.4. Input voltage, who cares, it's all cells are the same. It has got power, VPC, bypass, which is, I think, completely pointless. 
and it has got temperature control for war stainless steel yeah normal stuff nickel titanium looks like yep and tco oh look how gold it is <laughs> okay that's a bit gaudy you've kind of got a carbon fiber finish there but you can see the screen underneath so it's kind of that tricky hidden screen deal okay it does look it looks pretty cool like it's kind of a bronzy bronzy gold yeah i don't know <laughs> that's, mm, that's um yep <laughs> that's something oh damn it it's um it's not 510 oh free max what have you done that's an interesting doesn't unscrew no that's an interesting move okay so you can only use the provided tank with it you can't screw any tank on because it's not 510. They're really limiting their um, potential sales here, I think. That's the pod tank that comes with it, which is a PCTG, if I remember that properly. The, the really good stabilized plastic, not affected by, you know, citrus, what's the other one? Cinnamon, some other flavors can crack certain types of plastic. This guy is really stabilized. I put straight lemon concentrate in one of these tanks with that same material and left it for a week. No problems at all. No cracking. Didn't affect it all good non-removable drip tip it's all part of the tank oh and a rubber fill oh rubber fill plug <laughs> i'm not a fan of these i'm using freemax's pod at the moment and it's the same thing with the rubber fill plug and you always get some residue and stuff on your fingers the liquid on your fingers it's kind of a pain Having said that, I mean, at least in this case, you can pop that open and fill it while it's still on the mod. You don't even have to take it off. Interesting moves here, Freemax. I'm not sure about that. These coils are freaking huge, like massive. I haven't been using one of the Mesh Pro tanks for a while. I used to use them all the time, but I haven't used one for a while. And I forgot how freaking huge the coils are. I've got one of those coils. Yeah, it's basically a Mesh Pro coil with that kind of pod base on it. Well, you know, the base that plugs into the pod instead of a screw-in kind of guy. Huge. No wonder, like, look, the tank's pretty big and it only holds 5 mil. But no wonder, because you got that massive coil in it. So the tank had the, the dual coil pre-installed and it's using that really fine mesh, that interesting pattern, kind of diamond pattern mesh. Super fine wire, which seems to work really well. Just stick the triple straight in it because um, I got a pack of the triples. And I really like the triples. They were my favorites. And in the Fire Luke, whatever it is, the smaller one that uses the smaller format coils. Love the triples. Always talk about them. I think they are the best. Let's do a little zoom. There's the triple mesh. And you can see that really fine patterned wire in there. So this type of mesh is definitely better than the mesh that are individual strands. Like you imagine a strainer, you know, they've got individual strands in a weave. You can get hot spots in those. I've seen it because I've taken them out and put power on them and you can see there's hot spots. And they collect um, leftover juice gunk more in some spots. So you can tell they're getting hotter in some spots. These guys, I think, are more consistent because they're really one piece of mesh. So you, you basically can't have a hot spot. <laughs> it's just a chunky coil in it. Ugh, pretty strong magnet there. What if you whack it? Yeah, you can bump it off. Like it's really strong. Like that's seriously strong magnet that way. I'm trying to pull it straight out. But if you whack the end of the tank, yeah, you can pop it out. Unpopular opinion. Priming a coil, dripping liquid down into the middle of a coil to prime it is a complete waste of time. Don't bother doing it. Just a complete waste. It's just messy and... and Nothing is going to make the coil wick better than putting liquid in the tank and just submerging the coil in liquid. The best way to prime a coil, is put the coil in the tank, then you fill it up and you leave the cap off for a bit. So then there's no airlock, which means the juice can just flow straight into the cotton. There's just no better way of, of priming a coil than that. I will die on this hill. <laughs> so it's a bit goofy in this case because we've got a sideways filling port, but normally with the top cap, whack your new coil in, Fill it up with the top cap, leave the top cap off, leave it like a minute. That'll do. It'll be primed. You can basically just start using it straight away. Now, just remember, don't leave the cap open too long because if you fill it up, leave the cap off and walk away, go do something else for 20 minutes, come back, the entire tank will have dumped out over the mod. So don't do that. Just a minute or two is all you need. Maybe not even that. Just keep an eye on it. And AFC is nice and firm. 
really smooth but but firm that's not going to get bumped out of place i don't think it looks like heaps of airflow yeah fairly graphical kind of screen and we're in half watt increments which is better than 0.1 but still prefer whole watt I'll give it 90 it's um three milligram and that's normally feels pretty weak to me in other tanks and like especially in like 40 50 watt tanks that liquid is way too weak yep all right let's do 100 watts That'll do the job. Okay, next up we'll be a little bit forward in time and I'll let you know what I think of it and I'll disassemble it. We'll see what's inside it. Cool. So we're back about a week and a half later of solid use with the Freemax Maxis Max. <laughs> that name. <laughs> Overall, it's basically just like having a dual cell mod with a mesh pro tank on it. it it's pretty much performs the same, um, which is kind of a good thing, but also why is it a pod <laughs> i'm trying to see the benefits in having this device as a pod and i'm not seeing that many really i mean if you break the tank or you lose the tank it pops off whatever you can't screw a 510 tank on it so you're kind of stuck without a mod the other thing is also if you do lose it or break it and then say your shop is out of stock of the pods by themselves again you're stuck with the device you can't use so I don't know, like what's, I'm, I'm kind of failing to see the benefit of having this as a pod. Maybe just because the tank's cheaper to manufacture, like you're not having to machine a big slug of stainless steel. You've just literally got a plastic tank and it's a lot easier to make and cheaper, which I guess is one thing, but yeah, I don't know. Performance wise, it has been just like having a Mesh Pro. The triple coils in the Maxis Max are essentially the same as the coils you can get for the Mesh Pro. Uh, they don't want to know about anything below 80 watts for the triples. So when they say best at 100, yeah, that's about spot on. You're going to need that much power. I was running at 90, which is fine. But yeah, 80 and below, just not enough power for it. So they're not overly efficient coils, really. You've got to pump a fair bit of power into them to get anything out of them. I find I can get a similar performance out of the, the smaller range of Freemax coils, and the name of the tank is eluding me, but you know, the smaller smaller brother of the uh, Mesh Pro tank. Um, those, those coils are more efficient, so you get pretty much the same amount of vapor and at a lot lower power, like 60 watts or so. Mind you though, when you do crank it up to 100 watts, uh, you, you do get a pretty good draw off it. You know, it's a, it's a big cloudy, flavorful vape. It's, it's good. I did knock it over on cement and I just got a couple of teeny tiny little marks on it, but not a big deal. But you know, I'm thinking with hard use, this paint is probably going to come off and there's a lot of surface area there to, to come off. So just be aware of that. I do like the side fire bar. That's always cool instead of a button. So you can just kind of grab it with your hand and mash it. That's good. Have not had the battery door come open on me. Setting it down fairly firmly. Haven't had that pop open, which is good. I'm just wondering why you would get one of these compared to a dual 1860 device that had a 510 on it and then just having a mesh pro on it. Yeah, not sure. But I just despise the rubber plug. It's just a pain in the bum. I've found probably 80% of the times I feel this thing I need a tissue because I do end up spilling liquid and even just popping the, the little rubber flap open, you end up getting liquid on your fingers. And um, I find you kind of can't really see when you've got the bottle in there, you're trying to fill it. You kind of can't see if it's coming out or, or it does need to breathe air out of there as well. So you kind of can't tell when there's liquid overflowing and you end up with it dribbling down the mod. And I've had it go down into this crack here. So we're going to open it up and just see if that liquid's gotten inside. But yeah, rubber plug, fill method, come on, there's got to be a better way. You know, you're filling this tank up pretty often because it, it rips through the juice and it's not a huge capacity. So you are going to be filling this quite a lot. I mean, it's almost a deal breaker for me. And I'm thinking what will happen when this invariably breaks or gets pulled out, you know. Eh. Okay, so we're going to get it apart and have a look what's inside. Yep, let's do it. T5 Torx bit two more screws down the bottom here and another one hiding inside so bottom piece comes off so there's the door assembly with the pin that holds it to the frame and battery balance pin connector there and that's a slightly bigger pin than what we normally see they're normally like a very skinny tiny little pin and that guy's a bit wider. So that's kind of good. Gives it a bit better connection to the cell series. 
Oh yeah, it wasn't too hard. Oh, that's the screen underneath. Whoops, be careful. Okay, so there's no sort of retention for the screen. It's just sandwiched in between. Careful. Okay, so the screen is not held down with any sort of frame or retention. It's just the outer plate pushing down on the LCD that holds it in place. A couple of adhesive foam strips to kind of keep everything solid, which is okay. Not too bad. And the normal little silicon piece they put on the back of these switches to locate the button and stop the outer button sort of rattling around. So there's that guy there. Already seeing some conformal coating, so that is good. So it looks like it's actually a removable screen. Fair bit of adhesive on that plug to stop it popping out accidentally, which is good. A little attention to detail. And we have a Nation brand N32L406 microcontroller which I'm pretty sure that is a like an ARM Cortex, something like that, M0. It's what they often use. So we'll just carefully get this connector out of the way. So if you're having display issues for any reason, it's probably worth checking this plug, make sure it hasn't come loose. Like there's a fair bit of adhesive on there holding in place, but um, yeah, still worth a check. But they're very delicate cables and connectors, so you've got to be careful. Wow, that adhesive is really holding on. Oh, that's scary. Okay, look at that tiny, tiny little connector. Screen out of the way, safely, hopefully. <laughs> Obviously there's a cutout there where the USB-C socket sits into the frame. And they've made this inductor just at the right height so it will slip under. It will just slip under the case as the whole assembly goes in. And it seems like OBS just messed up all my settings for the microphone. So if that sounded really bad, I'm sorry. I'm so bad at recording stuff. Jesus. Um, hopefully it's not too bad distorted now. Okay, I found, ooh, I found some sneaky stuff here. This is cool. So the fire bar has got a little tab that sits in the bottom of the mod that holds it down the bottom and an adhesive pad that it will flex on every time you fire it. But it's actually held with this screw See if you can see that, that guy there, that screw doesn't actually hold anything in. It just goes through the hole in the fire bar and it's not threaded into that hole because it obviously needs to move. It's just a locator. So they pop the fire bar in, then put the screw in and the screw just pokes through to that hole and, um, and just retains it so it can still move, but it's not going to fall out. Which I thought was... Yeah, pretty sneaky little trick. Not bad. So it's actually the metal on the mod body is threaded, which is why that screw can thread in and stay there. Sneaky little plastic cover. And get him out. Ah, hidden screws. And there we go. So as soon as you take those two screws out, then the whole mod can slide out. Well, the inner assembly, sled and circuit board. And... I was wondering about how well they're sealing this top piece because as you can see there's condensation that collects in there and I've spilled liquid a few times around this gap as I said and down into the where the pod sits and uh, if we look down into the mod you can see there is definitely liquid collecting on the inside underneath that plate so what they've done is made a little lip that's cast into this frame and then an o-ring on this inner assembly so it goes up into that little lip and seals in there so that's not bad that's that's pretty good for ingress like it is kind of getting down into there and pooling which is not great it'd be kind of better if it didn't get into that whole area but it is sealed just one o-ring but yeah i mean it's sealed so it's not just going to pour straight through this uh 510 <laughs> 510 it's not going to just pour straight through this uh, pod connection where the, where the pod's sitting so that's good not bad it's all pretty well put together nice heavy spring on the positive connection and that's just plastic we'll see if we can pull that apart a bit further we don't want liquid going down through this this movable pin of course and getting down into the device so that would be bad news and we can see that they have used a heavier duty fire switch which is good to see, better than Vaporesso where they use the tiny little guys. C3 Max has thought about this and gone, well, we'll just use the light duty switches for the up down buttons, completely fine because they're not going to use that much. And then we'll put a bigger heavier duty switch 
on the outside. And these guys, I think, are kind of internally sealed because the what you're pressing on is it's actually a layer of like silicon. And then this top plate gets pressed over that when they put the switch together when they make the switch. So it's kind of inherently sealed, sort of better than these guys because that's just hard plastic and liquid will just go straight down into the contact and stuff the switch so yep decent fire switch and it is it's actually wired so that's interesting it's a yeah you should be able to pop that out and have a quick look yeah so we've got a separate board teeny tiny little board for the fire switch to sit on and then two wires that could be a point of failure these wires are tiny tiny conductors on them so with enough movement and vibration they can break off the board so if your mod is not firing it could very well be that you just need to re-solder these these wire connections to that switch board yeah i'm thinking that that might be an issue at some point like it's retained by the plastic but every time you're pressing on it, it will be flexing those wires just a tiny bit so eventually it can break it can cause enough sort of fatigue to the copper wire to, to break them It would be a possible point of ingress on the side of this mod where that fire bar is because there's obviously the whole thing's moving when you press it so you can't really seal it there's going to be a gap all the way around that fire bar and especially at the top there you would be the most worried about liquid dripping down into into the gap getting into the switch and then getting down into the board not that anyone ever means to spill liquid on their devices but Pay extra attention if you accidentally spill liquid over the fire bar. Just try not to try to wipe it off as soon as possible. Don't let it get in there. How does that come off now? Bloody hell, this mod. It's not giving its secrets up easily. Fairly complicated design and a fair bit of assembly required for this mod. It's all really screwed in pretty well. Like I don't see this ever coming apart with six screws just in this tiny little top plastic plate. So yeah, interesting, interesting. We can see the back of the board now. They've done the same kind of thing that Vaporeso does with their boards where, where they've got the board sitting on top of the cell sled. So you've got space in the middle and they go and run components. Can't quite see it. We'll see it a bit better when we get the board out. Run, they go and run components down the middle of the board where they've got some extra space. Overall, the board is looking really nice. So it looks like the whole, the whole board front and back is conformally coated, which is just where they spray a coating after they put all the components on, done all soldering, all that sort of stuff, they spray a coating on there that just helps it protect, just helps it protect it against ingress. It's not going to completely protect it. Like it's not going to make it waterproof, but it's going to help. It's going to help prevent corrosion because they know, you know, there's going to be liquid moisture and stuff eventually get into this somehow, probably through the fire switch. But it's really good when they do a conformal coating and um, it's kind of 50-50 what companies do it, which don't. But it does show they kind of care about the device lasting a bit longer and it not having a problem from real intended use that it's going to see. And wow, this is a tricky way to put a mod together. Just been scratching my head trying to figure out how in the hell they get to these screws inside. They're all hidden. You can't see them from inside. Then I spied these little clear silicon sections and I thought, what the hell are they for? And I guess they are plugs. And they are tiny little silicon plugs into that metal plate for the atomizer with hidden screws underneath you sneaky sneaky buggers and phillips head inside here so they do seem to switch for no apparent reason between t5 Torx and phillips head all the mod companies seem to do that not entirely sure why they don't just pick one and stick with it and why it would really matter okay two screws out and the top sprung plate for the atomizer comes off i keep wanting to call it a 510 but obviously it's not a 510 so there is the positive pin and the spring and there's a silicon o-ring built onto that pin which is good so we are sealed through we've got a little bit of liquid coming through it's a little bit moist on that underside which is not great but we do have a silicon o-ring there's a groove cut into this pin where they've got the silicon o-ring seating so they definitely have thought to seal this pin from liquid ingress which is good how effective it is it's a bit hard to say i'm not sure how good of a job that's going to do but i mean there definitely is an o-ring seal there just um it is a little bit damp on the underside so eh, mm, 
points for trying. And there's another hidden screw to get this top plate off. Fumbling. And once that screw is out, then we have our cell contacts and two springs underneath. There's the whole mod finally apart. And of course your battery monitoring and balancing line down the bottom there. It's nice and short, that wire, which is always good to see. Hiding in that little in-between battery part there. So that is good. Very short wire runs. A fairly thin gauge, these wires. Silicon jacketed, which is good. That seems to be fairly standard. I went on about this with, with the Vapresso Target 200. It's always good design if you can make the wires short for multiple reasons. Less voltage drop um, means your, your mod will actually run for longer. And there's less of a chance of these getting installed in the wrong spot and getting pinched or damaged or something like that. All right, we'll get the UV light out. Okay, so it's not the whole back of the board. It's just that strip of components, which is fine. You can see the conformal coating fluorescing. And on the front, we're kind of almost everything. Just sort of missed a few patches they have selectively coated it because they would want to avoid getting any coating in the screen socket and i guess they thought well there's no need to bother coating these areas that don't have any components on them but yeah other than that pretty much everything on the front side of the board is conformally coated it's really handy <laughs> it actually reacts to uv light it makes it so easy to see where they've sprayed it but yeah microcontroller completely covered and all the mosfets are covered as well which is good just three mosfets on this board so what you'll have is i'd say that will be a reverse polarity mosfet and these two will be the switching mosfets for the voltage conversion circuit they soldered the atomizer ground connection straight onto this plate interesting that they're soldering onto stainless steel which can be a bit tricky you do need special flux this plate has had a tag especially machined into it to allow it to be soldered too easily because otherwise if you're trying to do it on that flat surface you'd never get enough heat into it to get it to stick to stainless steel so having that tag poking out means you can um, get more heat into that small bit of metal, get up to the temp where the solder is going to stick to it. But um, that's just an interesting little thing I saw. Overall impressions of the Maxis Max. Um, pretty well put together, pretty well done. It is quite complicated, so we've got a lot of screws, a lot of little parts and plugs and hidden things in the construction. So I don't envy the people who are putting these together. There's a, there's a lot to do. It's just like having a dual cell 18650 mod with a mesh pro tank on it. Um, it's it pretty much the same coil range, same performance. Um, the difference being is you, you're kind of stuck with the pod and the crappy fill method. Uh, apart from that, the performance is, is basically the same. The liquid ingress protection is okay so it's not bad they have got an o-ring on the positive pin and on the whole plate that the atomizer sits on to stop liquid getting down from the top which is where it's most likely going to be so that's that's good not entirely sure about how well this pin is sealing the fire switch they've used the heavier duty switch but i'm a little bit worried that in time they might start breaking off these wires i do like it when they have an inner assembly which has got the board and cells on it and then that's slipped into the main metal body because then the cells are well protected not seeing any major major problems with it i think it's fairly well thought out well designed but fairly complicated inside from a lot of parts going on so if you're going to take one of these apart and good luck <laughs> okay that'll just about do it for the free max maxis max max maximum thank you very much for watching cheers see ya yay all back together and working